My name is Pekka Sarklan coming from Gispo, and I'd like to give you a presentation about how we have uh, developed it together with Finavia about the management of the airport data with FOS4G. Um, unfortunately, Finavia people couldn't join here. Maybe uh, GIS manager is following this online or checking the recordings later on. If you have any questions to the Finavia, I'm happy to pass your contact information or questions to, to them if, if you need it. So Finavia for smooth traveling. Um, it's a Finnish uh, state-owned company who is operating about 20 different kind of uh, airports in Finland. The most southern one and the biggest one is Helsinki Vanta, and I think quite many of you have passed from from airport uh, Helsinki to here in Tartu, and then Ivalo is uh, the, the most northern ones. Helsinki Airport is about 50 million passengers, over 50 million passengers per year. They have about 19 different kind of uh, airports in Finland, and then they have also a subsidiary AirPro, which is taking care about the different kind of aviation uh, services in the airports in Helsinki and others. Uh, in Finavia and about the geospatial information, they want to maintain and develop the uh, GIS data uh, in all airports built environment. It's very strongly uh, regulated operating environment. I will come later on to, to whether you can idea what's going on there. They have a GIS strategy uh, to, uh, to guideline development of the activities and they are using both open source and closed source softwares. Their aim is to developing the from the CAD to the GIS and backwards, so that's always the challenge with this kind of built environment uh, 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 area. Gizpo is founded in 2012, about 25 people. We uh, develop and train and consult uh, customers uh, in, in, in Finland and in Sweden. And we like to be also the advocate for the open source technologies and open data. So, passenger map. Uh, in this presentation, I give you an idea about the land air, uh, land side information, which is like passenger map, and then the air side. The air side is where the aircraft is traveling. Well, probably you've never been in the air side. I mean, of course, in the aircraft, but not really in the, in the field, because that's a really security and safety issue that passengers go, don't go in the air side. But let's talk about passenger map first. So whenever you arrive in, in, in an airport, you, you want to know where you park your car, how you pass the security clearance, oh, before you, of course, if you have had some packages, you want to give it away and so on, but how to, tra how to see the information or how to find your location, uh, you, you can use different kind of web apps. So this is an example of the airport map. Uh, and, and you can uh, open up in your own browser or in your mobile devices. So it's a little bit slow because I have a very bad network connection. So you see different kind of uh, areas in the Helsinki airport. You can go to the selected area and then you can zoom in. And this is like uh, first there's a second level, which is a uh, departing level. And then uh, you zoom out, uh, zoom in, and you get more information. This is the arrival level in Helsinki. And third level is the, the lobby level. I don't know if you want to go there. Uh, so you can see all the services. If you go via Helsinki, the movement shop is the first place to go. And then probably the Finnish uh, people are aware about the oak barrel Irish pub, very full at 6 a.m. when they op open up at 5.30. And you can also see the drinking water facilities there. So this is very uh, simple uh, idea that how the passengers can understand where are the services, different kind of services in the airport. Not again. So the passenger map, uh, the same data is in different kind of devices. So this was a like, desktop application web app. 
but uh, it works also on your mobile phone. But if you go to the airport and you see this kind of service information desks, the same data is also there. So whenever they update the, uh, the data, it will go in all these kind of devices. So very basic in, uh, uh, image about the architecture. There is an airport uh, data editor uh, with good GIS here and storing all the information to the PostGIS database. And then we have a separate environment where we make a uh, read-only copy of the data. And then we have a geo server giving uh, APIs, WMS, WVMTS, and then vector file tiles. And they, uh, of course, I show you about the passenger map, which is low mobile web and devices interface. But there's also other stakeholders who are using uh, directly those uh, APIs with their own systems. So if you go to the uh, with your QGIS and probably what find their WMS services, you can also include or use the uh, data in your own desktop application. Uh, QGIS editing environment looks like this. Uh, not, nothing very special. Our only challenge is, of course, that you have a visualization in GUGIS and we have a geo server where, where we make also the visualization and how to transform the visualization from the GUGIS to geo server. It's uh, painful to everybody. I don't know when we can solve it. Not maybe in the future, but uh, we'll see. This is a very simple kind of environment. Then I have been a little bit working with the passenger maps, but mostly my experience is with the aeronautical data, the air side. And uh, I have been, uh, yeah, we have been working with the Finavi about five years plus, and now I start to understand how, uh, how small is my uh, know-how about the aeronautical data and the manage of that. So about aviation for GIS nerds, uh, Safety and security is first, uh, and, and it's very, everything is regulated. Uh, there is, and it's very conservative. I mean, in, in, in many ways, I will say. And, and it's sometimes uh, slowing things, but uh, sometimes it's good to have stable environment. Some aviation organization uh, abbreviations is a key thing to understand. So I personally, I don't remember or don't even know what is the difference with the aerodrome and the airport, but there is a, a difference there. Uh, AIS is Aeronautical Information Services. Every nation have an AIS uh, entity, agency, uh, public administration, who is taking care about the manage the aeronautical information in that state. Uh, Eurocontrol is European Organization for Safety of Air Navigation. Of course, European Union have a own safety agency for the uh, aviation. And then FAA is a, a US-based Federal Aviation Authority, which is like Eurocontrol plus minus ES, ESA. And then there's a ICAO, which is an international civil aviation organization, part of the United Nations agencies. So, there's a lot of different kind of organization, and you better understand later on why I am like to show you this kind of slide. So everything started in 2010, really, in the, in the, about the ADQ, Aeronautical Data Quality. Uh, very interesting uh, European Union regulation. If you think about the Inspire, that's like easy stuff, uh, if you compare on those. This AD, original ADQ was replaced uh, with two different kind of regulation in uh, uh, 2014 and 2017. And if you want to read those regulations, easy thing is to download this uh, easy access rules, which is about 800 pages full uh, with the PDF. It's over, also available in HTML if you like to read. Uh, as working in the airport, I'm most uh, concentrating this first one, easy access rules for aerodromes, but uh, there are some uh, um, references to, to this other regulation, so you have to read both if you want to understand what you should do. 
you don't, can't forget the IAXM, which is Aeronautical Information Exchange Model, basically GML-based XML stuff, which you use to transfer the data between uh, different agencies. Don't even start to think about the JSON. It's, 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 I mean, we are now in IXM 5.1.1, and we are di there's a discussion going on what will happen with 5.2, which will come in a few years. So it's, it's very conservative as an industry. All those regulations include references to other re regulations, so they don't want to copy the regulations from A to B, so you have to read also accounts chapter 17 and 14 and whatever they have to better understand what is actually demanded for the, for the regulation. If somebody wants to, to discuss more about this, maybe we can have a lunch or two or a week or whatever. But I like to limit it, what is the regulated, what they actually say in the regulation for the airports. Uh, and it's very simple. Airport operator, which is uh, quite often also the owner of the airport. Uh, in Finavia it's also operator and owner, but in other countries it could be so that the owner is different than the operator. I uh, have to describe process uh, to maintain uh, aeronautical, aeronautical data of the airport. Uh, it's not only the geospatial data. I mean, there's other data sets also, but uh, I'm just concentrating here in the geospatial information. Uh, you have to follow accuracy in and integrity rules uh, in the field measurements. Uh, you have originate, verify, verify and validate all the data and you have to manage the traceability uh, of the data. So from the field, into databases, and into data deliveries, you have to maintain the information what's going on. And that makes uh, uh, this kind of uh, data sets very complicated in some way. And it's have to, uh, airport have to deliver airport aeronautical data to AIS for further publications. So very simplified. Uh, aeronautical data flow. So we have a, maybe I can here so you can see. So there is a, how it works? Oh. So uh, there's an airport operator here, AIS is here, and a Euro control is here, and then we have uh, end users who are actually using the data. So the airport is responsible about the data collection in the field. Then they uh, modeling the data. So if they collect like a runway threshold or, or aircraft standpoints, they use GPS devices or outside uh, operator is using, they are storing the, da uh, the data in the database. And then they make airport charge, uh, which will be coming to the end users. They are the PDFs if you go to the uh, uh, AIS.ee, uh, you can find the Tartu Airport airport charts and you can download it, those PDFs. They are usually not the geospatial PDFs, so, so you have to figure out how to make the coordinate systems and so on if you want to use that in the, in the QGIS. So then airport is responsible to transfer the data with AXM in the AAS. They usually store the data in the database and they make different kind of products. And then this national AIS is delivering the data to Eurocontrol, who will take care about that the data is uh, uh, useful for, for like European uh, wide data sets. And they will take care about also that the, in, the, in the middle of the airspaces from Estonia to, to Finland, that the, all the data is uh, unique and, and they, there's no conflicts and so on. The conflict resolution in the border area is very interesting, but that's not outside of the airport operator uh, issue. So the implementation, we have a PostgreSQL with PostGIS. We use PG audit to auditing all modifications to external data storage. So we have to follow up that what kind of uh, updates, inserts, and deletes have been done. We use PG Modeler to make the database model. 
uh, and we are adapting the features from IXM and other regulations. So this database is like a Finavia way to handle the airport data. Uh, I think it's useful for other players also if need if 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 ask it, but it's uh, it's not. Uh, full features, I mean, there's a missing pieces, but we are working on those. And then uh, there was a talk about, or there's a lot of talks about the metadata. So the data layer metadata is simply thing, simply thing. We have to keep the uh, feature level metadata. So, thank you. Uh, like data source, ADQ, integrity uh, levels, and all those kind of information have to be collected in, in feature level. And also, we are creating the unique identifiers for the every feature, so we can uh, th think the, this traceability and manage the traceability. Uh, about those ADQ integrity rules, uh, uh, critical, routine, essential, it means that the critical information have to be validated every year. So there's a runaway threshold or aircraft standpoint, uh, airport have to every year to check that, that data is not changing. And if it changes, they have to re-measure it in the field. And they manage information about data originator, verificator, validator, and deliverer by feature. So that's uh, also the challenge to do. So Guji has editing in from environment. We have several projects for manage different uh, data layers. Uh, this is an aircraft uh, stand uh, or apron. Uh, version of the of the of the editing environment. Then we have it, and it's from the test version. I don't want to have access to the production version. I'm just a developer, so so that's out out of my scope. And then um, there is a lot of those uh, uh, GUIs forms where you can manage the, all the uh, information. And here's the example about those those feature level metadata that you can see that there there is uh, every Every, every field has different kind of, so elevation have a source, and elevation has also ADQ integrity, and you see it in the, in the source, we have put some kind of information where the data has gone. So actually we have made the uh, uh, data population from the existing uh, uh, API information on August 11, 2020. So the future plans, uh, there's a new demands from the customers and users. There's a new and updated regulations. They, they changed the regulation before everybody has implemented it. So it's uh, uh, like, like uh, moving target all the toys. Uh, idea is to plan to model the airport to the GIS database. Uh, now there's a lot of CAD drawings, and we'd like to have uh, transfer the information from the CAD drawings to the uh, GIS database. There is other um, entity, EuroK, which has made a uh, uh, definition for the aerodrome mapping database, which is a little bit different than the IXM and a little bit different than uh, that what this uh, ADQ is saying that the airport should do. So there's a other regulation we have to follow up later on. This R AMDB is more close to the GIS database than, than, than the others. Thank you. Thank you, Becca. Thank you, Becca, for this insight into behind the curtains of what's actually uh, happening in the airport. Um, a passenger view, it's kind of Really interesting to see it uh, like this. Do you have any questions? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the presentation. And then, yeah, my question is uh, related to the building information modeling. If you are going to also integrate uh, uh, that kind of models for, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, uh, oh, sorry, I have to finish now. No. So, uh, no, so no, no answer on that. Uh, no, uh, uh, when we talk about the, the, the land side, 
and the passenger map, uh, that's only, that's public information. And then there's, uh, because of the security reasons, they are not showing, of course, to areas where the passengers can't go. So that building model will include that area too, and that will be a very secure way to handle. I mean, there are certain areas that they don't want to map in the airport. And that's something that I neither, I haven't even seen those. So my, like, my security clearance is good enough for that. So there's a different kind of level of security. But those passenger map, that's the uh, public areas, and we just show those on that. And it's a better passenger map. Passenger map is made for the passenger services, not, not nothing else. Any more questions? So I have, ah. <laughs> ah. So I have like a, just a, cu a curiosity on how long does it take to create a map uh, of one iteration of the airport for your team basically? Mm, uh, like how long does it take to finish the Q QGIS uh, up, uh, update of a single iteration? Uh, oh, oh, you mean the passenger map? Or yeah, for instance, because it's, I get it gets updated, but how long it could get like one airport, how long a project like this takes? Uh, well, they have all the data already, so, so it's only updated. So they update like, and, and I think it's uh, every night they transfer the data for the passengers or, or even faster if necessary. Uh, a bit of a tangent here. Yeah. I, I've been working in specifications the past few years, so I get curious <laughs> when okay. you talk about things like AXM. Yeah. So two quick questions. Are you publishing data in the AXM L format? And second question is, are you considering a linked data approach for a further version of the, of the model? Um, first thing is that uh, no, there's no publicly available AXM uh, uh, to have. Second thing about the AXM, that uh, when I have discussion with the Eurocontrol and other uh, agencies about the AXM, it seems to that they really have a, their own flavor of AXM. There's those vendor options. So it depends, uh, where is my data flow? So you have, if you want to use AXM uh, uh, between the Finavia and the Finnish AAS, they have to accurate what kind of version or, uh, uh, you know, uh, version of the AXM they are using. And I know that there is a data or uh, IT service providers in this side, and they have different AXM flavors for different uh, states. And, and it takes also, we, because, it, yeah, yeah, it's complicated. <laughs> Uh, what was the second question, or did you? Yeah, if if uh, so, you talk, you re refer to um, coming versions of AXM. Yeah, and also JSON, and I'm wondering if that's related with a, a wheel to have a, a linked data approach, semantic web, all that, all that jazz. Uh, I think geoJSON, geoJSON, or other JSON kind of. Uh, 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 definitions that does not include all, everything what is needed for my AXM. So, so we can't go in that. And this 5.2 will fix the, some errors and add something. And I don't see that I can see the future. Maybe I, I like to retire before <laughs> AXM will transfer to JSON, but that's it. I mean, yeah. Any more questions? Well, if that's the case, thank you, Pekka, for the presentation. Thank you.